Hi there everyone, my name is Preetam Negi and in this video we will be designing the Oldham coupling. Now before we start designing it, let's just talk about the Oldham coupling, what actually it is. The Oldham coupling is used to connect two parallel shaft as we can see here in this picture. The Oldham coupling is the inversion of double slider crank chain mechanism and is basically used in case of misalignment of two shaft. So let's start designing Oldham coupling. Let's click on new and select assembly and here I will give it a name Oldham. I'm keeping it as default template and my default template is millimeter newton second. If you also want to know that how you can create the default template or you can set the default template in PTC Creo, then I will place the link of another video in the description of this video. So now let's start making this Oldham coupling. Now let me just create the part first which is the base. And I will use fixed joint here because our base is fixed. Let's activate this part and create the base. Okay, now let me just create the wall. And I'm going to create the hole for the shaft. Let's take the distance from this end is 30 and it's at a center of this wall and the dia of the shaft is 30. The hole will be till this reference. Now let's take another hole. This time I'm gonna make it 35 so that we have a Axis misalignment of 5 mm. And here we can see. Okay, now let's create the shaft. Right now, don't worry about the length because we will be, we can change it later on. Let's create a keyhole. Now what we need to do, uh, as we know the shaft have a rotation motion, so I will be assembling it with the help of pin joint.
and let me take out the shaft from the hole with a distance of 15. We can check this one with the help of drag component. And here we have some problem, but let's try to solve it, but I'm going to save it first. As we know, we have used the fix as the constraint, so it should not rotate like this. Let me just delete it and I'm going to assemble it back. Now again, pin joint, shaft, axis to axis and surface to surface with uh, offset distance of 15 mm. Again, we have same scenario, but this time the shaft is working fine as expected. Now we need to assemble the same shaft here as well. We can create another shaft, but I'm going to use the same to save time. So control plus C and control plus V and I will be assembling it manually. So I have chosen this one. Now let's uh, Okay, clear and this axis alignment, we need to flip it. Okay, but here we can see, uh, I'm not seeing the option to flip. So let me delete this and flip it manually. Again, the offset distance of 15. Now here we have two pin joint or two shaft which is ready to transfer the torque. Now we will be creating the flange. As we know the tire of the shaft is 30. So we will be keeping the hole of the flange to be 30. And let's say the outer is 65 and this flange is 45 mm thick. Let's create a step. to 15 mm and remove material but outside like this and here we will be creating the key slot of width 5 mm and of depth 2.5 up to let's say 15 and remove material now one more thing that we need to do is activate it again and create a slot for the dullin part Create a point here. And create a coincident. Let's make it 15 of dev 10. Flip and remove material. Now I will be assembling it. So this time I will be using the normal constraints 
so axis to axis and this flange is connected with the shaft with the help of key so we need to connect this key slot hole with this one make this angle offset coincident flip and now we can see both are coincident and here we will be taking some depth of let's say 10 mm or maybe 15 now we need to have a section view so that we can create a proper slot for the key okay so we will be using this plane And here we can see we need to increase the slot distance. So I will be making it uh, 30. Now we can see the slot is going up to here. And I can create a key of 30 mm. So let's create this key as well. Now let's activate this part. The key having width of 5 mm and length of 30 mm with a depth of 5 we can adjust it later on but let's make it like this and activate the main assembly now we will be assembling this part so let's connect the side to side Coincident from base to base, coincident, and the last one also we will be using the constraint coincident. So, in this way, we can see we have successfully installed the key. Now, we can also check the interference here. For that, uh, just go to your section view and click on edit definition. And in option, you can see so interference. So here we can see we have some interference with the key. So we will be increasing or decreasing the size of the key. And I know why this is because I believe the depth here is two. So let's make it two and a half. Now let's save it and we will not see any interference now so interference was represented by red color we can even change it if we want here with any other color so now as we can see there is no interference left so i'm gonna keep it like this and let's hide the section as well now we require to create another flange i'm going to copy it quickly flange 2 okay now the flange 2 is being assembled here let's open it and assemble here Again, 
we will be using the same let's connect surface to surface of keyway and give it the con coincident and now again the value this one of distance 15 okay so in this way we have successfully installed both now what we need to do is we need to create the center disk now how the center disk is being created it will be created using dull in material as we know but here we can see the distance is too much between the both it's 120 so let me just increase the value or the length of the shaft by 30 i'm gonna make it 130 and now still there is a huge gap so let's make it 150 now i think the gap is ideal which is 20 <clears throat> now let's just create the center disk let me just give it a name center disk okay so i will be creating the center disk of dia which is similar to the dia of the flange which is 65 let's just activate it having thickness I forgot let me just calculate it quickly which is here and here 20 mm and 10 mm okay so let's go back here and make it of 20 mm and now I need to extrude This one let's make it 15 and this one we will be using coincident by creating a point here and using coincident now let's create project to remove the extra part and use delete segment to delete unnecessary entities now the depth was 10 and we need to create another extrude with angle of 90 degree let's use coincident fifteen same value and okay so here we have created this center disk now let's assemble it this time we need to use slider joint but uh, we may face some challenge but let's make it and i am also making this for the first time so i am also unaware of it let's create this as a slider joint face to face okay now we need to create another slider 
I hope we should not have any issue but we might over constrain it so uh, what I'm gonna do is instead of creating it as a slider joint what I can do I can take a new set let me try it once more you know how we're gonna over constrain it because we have already constrained this face with this so if I constrain this face with this which is again a uh, essential part of creating a slider connection it can create over constraint because we have already constrained in this direction let's try it and if there is no possibility then we will try another method okay and uh, in case of rotation maybe I can use this one yes now let's see it how it work so here we can see it is working as expected and I am quite happy with the performance of it in terms of how it is working as you can see it is sliding now let's create animation of it but before that I would like to uh, you know make it little bit let me just beautify it by creating rounds here and there okay so length was 160 if I create a round of 80 then how it look okay it look normal okay now what else okay so let me just create another round of value 5 and uh, let's select all these surfaces What else we can do? Uh, we can also create chamfer on our shaft. And chamfer to these parts. So let's create a very small chamfer of value 0.5 here and here of value 1 chamfer actually help us to you know avoid accidents because sharp as may be harmful for the end user so we always divert our part and we know this part will be made up of stainless steel or maybe aluminum so here in order to make a guide we can also provide chamfer you know chamfer actually help the shaft to go inside because definitely there will be maybe slight fit of g6 and h7 okay so in this way we have created all the chamfer in this part now same can be done here but i'm going to quickly create okay i'm not creating all of them but it will consume a lot of time but let's create it you know because we have already created all the chamfers now let's make it one one and the last left is 0.5 okay now let's go back and now let's color it so quickly I'm going to make it 
of brass material and the middle one is dull rin so let's make it white because dull rin is white in color and the shaft is made up of stainless steel for example or maybe of simple steel dead mild steel or maybe en31 with carburizing okay so the base is generally made up of dull mild steel so let's make it of it or maybe of aluminum mm. where is aluminum metals aluminum and this one yep okay time now came to render this part let's make it perspective how it look I wanted to create animation in the render mode but it take a lot lot of time so what I will do I will quickly render it and now let's quickly go to application and mechanism and click on servo motor we are going to take any axis now here we can define angular velocity or maybe angular acceleration and here we can define the value the initial velocity is zero and the final uh, angular acceleration is five degree per second square so now we can click on ok and now we can go to mechanism analysis here we can define the value let me define it as a hundred and let let's just see how it is oh my god so it is running very fast let's make the frame rate 75 which is the refresh rate of my monitor <laughs> i'm going to reduce the time by half and this time let's see how it is and now you can see the working of this old home coupling we can also play with this animation why i wanted to play with this animation because now we can see how the part is being sliding inside it now we can see we have two sliding pair as this is the inversion of double slider crank chain and two turning pair which are these two so that's all guys from my side in this video i hope you enjoyed it if yes then don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and i will see you soon in my next video till then bye bye